Welcome to Nickfield, the Mayor and Justices of London Borough, Lambeth and Lobridge. Lord Wilson will explain the judgment of the court. In 2002, the London Borough of Lambeth let a one-bedroom flat to Mr. Loveridge. It was a secure tenancy under the Housing Act 1985. In July 2009, Mr. Loveridge went to Ghana. He stayed there for five months, but he continued to pay the rent. Unfortunately, Lambeth, for some reason, came to believe that he had died. In September 2009, it repossessed the flat. Soon afterwards, it disposed of its contents and relet the flat. Mr. Loveridge sued Lambeth for damages. His Honour Judge Blunston found that its eviction of him had been unlawful. The issue is the amount of his damages, and it revolves around Section 28 of the Housing Act 1988. In 1988, Parliament was concerned about the shortage of accommodation available for rent in England and Wales. Property owners regarded letting as unattractive. This was because the law protected residential tenants by preventing landlords from charging a market rent and from regaining possession at the end of the agreed period of the tenancy. So, in 1988, Parliament decided that, broadly speaking, there should be no new protected tenancies, and it developed other models of tenancy, called assured tenancies, which would enable landlords to charge market rents and also, in some cases, to regain possession at the end of the agreed period. But Parliament was concerned that these reforms would lead unscrupulous landlords to evict existing protected tenants in order to enable them to relet the property under these new arrangements more favorable to themselves. So, in order to deter unlawful evictions, it enacted Section 28 which broadly provided that, by way of damages, the landlord should pay to the unlawfully evicted tenant not the conventional amount of his loss, but, if higher, the amount of the gain which the landlord had made as a result of the eviction. Local authority landlords, although not the target of Section 28, were not excluded from it. Subsection 1 of Section 28 therefore provides, in effect, that the court should first take the value of the premises to the landlord on the date of the eviction on the assumption that the tenant had continued to have the same right to occupy them and should then take their value to the landlord with vacant possession and that it is the difference between them which must be paid to the tenant. It was on this basis that Judge Blunston ordered Lambeth to pay £90,500 to Mr. Loveridge by way of damages under Section 28. For the evidence before him was that the value of the flat in September 2009 was £123,000 if owned subject to a secure tenancy and was £90,500 more if owned with vacant possession. But Lambeth appealed to the Court of Appeal against the judge's order under Section 28. And the Court of Appeal allowed its appeal, set aside the order under Section 28, and substituted an award of damages in the conventional amount of Mr. Loveridge's loss, which had been agreed to be only £9,600. The Court of Appeal held that the judge had failed to give effect to subsection 3A, of section 28. This provides that, for the purposes of the valuations to be made pursuant to subsection 1, the court should assume that the landlord is selling his interest on the open market to a willing buyer. The Court of Appeal noted that, if, however improbably, Lambeth was to sell the flat, it would be to a private landlord, whereupon Mr. Loveridge would become an assured tenant liable to pay a market rent. So, according to the Court of Appeal, the first valuation of the flat had to be on the basis that Mr. Loveridge would have an assured tenancy of it, and the second, as before, on the basis of vacant possession. On this approach, the evidence before the judge had been that there was no difference at all between the two values. 
Mr Loveridge has appealed to this court, and today the court unanimously allows his appeal and restores the award made to him by Judge Blunston under Section 28. We hold that the assumption of a sale required by subsection 3A should not lead the court to factor into its valuations under subsection 1 such consequences of a sale as run directly counter to the terms of subsection 1 itself. Subsection 1A describes the assumption behind the first valuation as being that the tenant would continue to have the same right to occupy as before the eviction. The right to occupy enjoyed by Mr. Loveridge was that of a secure tenant, and so it is wrong to conduct the first valuation on the assumption that his right would become that of an assured tenant. In terms, at any rate, of the level of damages, Mr. Loveridge is a lucky man. Lambeth's unfortunate eviction of him was not conducted with a view to making a gain, and other than briefly on paper, it did not make one. Parliament might usefully reconsider whether to continue to include local authorities within the regime set by Section 28 for payment of damages for unlawful evictions at, in effect, a penal level. The court is now adjourned.